Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Caraman for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So Caraman is a nation that starts off in Anatolia. We're one of the four Anatolian Beyliks at the start of the game and we are in an extremely extremely difficult position sort of trapped between the Ottomans and the Mamluks with only an opportunity to fight some of the smaller nations right here Ramazan and Dilkadir, which they themselves often do ally the Ottomans or the Mamluks or they get eaten up before we can do anything with them. Pair with this horrible 001 starting ruler and a 100 starting heir and no unique missions makes Caraman one of the most difficult starts in 1444. But don't worry, by using this guide you will be getting the sufficient allies that you need to fight the Ottomans as your first war and crush them and pair with the amazing Caraman and national ideas such as plus 0.5 yearly army tradition and minus 20% core creation cost as starters, plus 5% discipline as a finisher, tab and culture conversion discount, plus 20% manpower, calf combat ability, diplomacy Diplomats, a dev discount, religious unity, and your legitimacy, you will go on to crush the Ottomans and form the Sultanate of Rum in no time. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Caraman. Alright, alright, here we are as Caraman, and the first thing we're gonna wanna do is try and secure some alliances. And the nations that we're gonna try to ally are the usual Ottoman rivals, along with some other ones. So, the nations that you are going to want to get, and that it is pretty easy to get them, are the Mamluks, the Great Horde, and Hungary. And if you're lucky, if Poland doesn't get Lithuania as a junior partner, if they choose to not do that in the event, it is possible for you to ally Lithuania as well. Although that isn't really common, so we'll be going for the Mamluks, the Great Horde, and Hungary. So, the first thing we're going to do right here is go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Next, we're going to give the Ulama Religious State and Clerical Advisory Council, along with religious diplomats, and grant local residents to scholar. Then I recommend granting the privilege to a scholar of the Jafari school for plus 10% shock damage. Next, we're gonna give the Umera primacy of the Umera, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. Then we're gonna give the merchant guilds land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the merchant guilds. And we won't be giving the Dimi anything just yet. We'll do that later when we get Christian provinces. And then we're gonna seize land. Next, we're gonna take our free merchant right here and send him to collect in Constantinople. Once he's there, you are gonna tell him to hostile trade so we gain a spy network on the Ottomans faster. That spy network will help us siege down their forts slightly faster. And then we're gonna take this merchant that's in Aleppo over here, tell him to collect in Alexandria, and once he's there, we're gonna tell him to establish communities. This is gonna help us ally the Mamluks faster. Next, you're gonna go ahead and hire a Diplo Rep advisor. Keep firing these guys until you get one if you don't have one right at the start. An improved relations guy would also work pretty good, but Diplo Rep is slightly better. Next, we're gonna right click on the Ottomans right here and go into the Show Diplomatic Feedback tab, and we're gonna manage our attitude and set our attitude towards them as threatened. Next, with one of our free diplomats, we're gonna start improving relations with the Mamluks, and with the other one, you might be able to ally or royal marry the Great Horde right off the bat. If not, improve relations with them. I can royal marry them. And there we go. Once a month passes, I'll be able to ally them as well. Next, you can go ahead and lower army maintenance and turn off your forts to save some money. And you can go ahead and rival the nations that have rivaled you, such as Byzantium, Cyprus, and Delcadir. Now it's time to improve relations and try and ally the Mamluks, the Great Horde, and Hungary. And it's time to wait around. We're not getting rid of this heir just yet. We need the prestige for now. And there we go, after a month has ticked by, I am able to royal marry the Ottomans immediately. You may or may not be able to do this, but eventually, after improving relations with them, you will for sure be able to do it. And there we go. I still can't ally them, I still need to improve with them a bit. And at this point, I can also ally the Great Horde. Once you've secured the Great Horde as an ally, you are gonna start improving relations with Hungary as well. So now we have one of the three allies we need the Great Horde, the Mamluks, and Hungary. Also pay attention to what happens with Lithuania. At this point, you can also tell these two light ships to go ahead and protect trade over in Aleppo. And as you can see, this merchant here is establishing communities, and this merchant here is hostile trading. And there we go, only after a few months, when the Mamluks have declared war on someone, I can go ahead and ally them. That's excellent. Once you've secured your alliances with the Great Horde and with the Mamluks, keep improving with Hungary, and with this one free diplomat right here, you are gonna wanna start currying favors with the Mamluks. Additionally, we also start off with three cores on the Ottomans, which means we don't have to spy on them to get a claim. 
that spy network will only be useful to get some sieges done a little bit faster. Also, once you've allied the Great Horde and the Mamluks, you don't have to worry about the Ottomans declaring on you. They won't feel like they're strong enough, so there's no need to worry about them declaring. We will declare on them when we're ready. At this point, if you can see that Ramazan or Dulkadir don't have any allies or any strong allies, you can go ahead and start spying on them and fight them if you want to. This isn't something that's necessary and only do it if you do have an opportunity. But these diplomats are better put to use improving relations with Hungary and currying with the Mamluks. We do want to get that done as soon as possible rather than fight someone. And there we go. In my case, Poland chose to get Lithuania as a junior partner, so I won't be counting on them. If you had that event and Poland chose the OP ruler instead, you can go ahead and improve with Lithuania as well because you will be able to ally them too if they're independent, of course. Once you've improved relations with Hungary to the max, you probably still won't be able to ally them. But don't worry, we can get around some of these negative modifiers. The first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and scornfully insult the Ottomans right here. And if that's still not enough, you will have to get rid of the Kiramanese army strength negative modifier, of course, by building up our army. And we are going to waste a couple of ducats to do that, but it's not a big deal. So you can go ahead and hire the free company, and after that you may be able to ally Hungary, but if you still can't, go ahead and hire another mercenary company, it doesn't matter which one, we are gonna delete it. And there we go, after hiring two mercenary companies, our army strength has gone up, and we can ally Hungary just like that. And about three years after the game starts, you should have secured all the three necessary alliances that will help us defeat the Ottomans. After this, you can go back to chilling and waiting for the Ottomans to fight someone and currying favors with your allies. Of course, do get rid of the mercenary companies right here because we won't be using them just yet. After you've allied the Mamluks and Hungary, keep currying favors with both of these guys. After you've secured these alliances, something else you can do is get rid of this horrible heir. For now, we're stuck with the ruler, but oh well. By this point in the game, the Ottomans will have started their conquests. They just beat up Byzantium in my case. This is what they took from them and Serbia. Funnily enough, Byzantium does still exist, and now they've turned their sights to some of the smaller Anatolian Beyliks, such as Chandar and Dulkadir. This is completely normal, don't worry about it. After you've created 10 favors with one of the Mamluks and Hungary, with that free diplomat, you can go ahead and start spying on the Ottomans. Don't make any claims though. And this is precisely what we're waiting for, the Ottomans to declare on someone else over in the Balkans, which funnily enough, just as I finished creating favors with all three of my allies, that did happen, and they did declare on Albania, who, as we all know, is guaranteed by Venice. Now, this is precisely what we're waiting for. And even if you have 10 favors with all of your allies, wait for them to do something like this, to fight someone in the Balkans, like maybe Byzantium again, Epirus, Venice, Albania, Serbia, Wallachia, whoever they fight. And this is also the time when we strike. So, as we can see, this is the war right here. You can go ahead and check who will help you. Everyone will help me that I have allied because we've created favors with them. The only reason the Mamluks might not want to help you at that specific moment is if they're fighting someone else over in Arabia. But you can wait for that a little bit. They usually wrap up those wars really fast and you will be able to call them in. So, once something like this happens, and once all of your allies are ready to join, you can go ahead and activate your forts, give your ruler military command, take out a couple of more loans, don't be afraid to do that, we'll be getting lots of money from the Ottomans, and you can build up your main army to 8 too, and you can also hire the free company as well. And once that's done, you can go ahead and take this navy right here and split it up into pretty much one of each ship. And you can put them around in all of the sea tiles around the Ottomans right here, so we can attempt to find out where the Ottoman armies are located. Pretty much something like this. We will lose these boats, yes, but we may gain knowledge of where the Ottoman armies are located. And there we go, I've hired the free company and I've sent all of these boats out, and we can see that the Ottomans have about 40k troops, here's one of their armies, here's another one, here's another another one down here. This is who they're fighting, so I know none of their armies are over in Anatolia. And once they're fighting someone over here, and once they've sent their entire army over there, it is time for us to declare. So, go ahead and declare on the Ottomans for the reconquest of whatever, maybe this one core right here, call in all your allies, and don't worry if they're allied to Tunis or someone like that. Of course, the most common alliance that they have is with Akkuyunlu. The strongest alliances they can have are pretty much when they're allied to Tunis, Akkuyunlu, Gazikumuk, and when they have Crimea as a subject. But that rarely happens by this point. You're most likely going to be fighting them and Akkuyunlu. And once you're ready, go ahead and declare. Keep in mind that the Ottomans may have Miltek 4 at this point, which could be a bit dangerous. So try to avoid battles with them. Neither you, nor Hungary, nor the Mamluks 
will have Miltech 4. Additionally, once you start the war, you can go ahead and fire the Diplo Rep or Improve Relations guy that you have at the start and hire a Morale, Discipline, Fort Defense, or Manpower guy. Morale or Discipline is the best, but I don't have any of them, so I'm just gonna get this Manpower guy. And go ahead and start fighting the Ottomans. You will want to tell these armies to allow attachments to you, so the Mamluk army can bunch up and be close to you. Go for Ankara first, the Mamluks will usually deal with Akkuinlu and then come to help out. And keep in mind that this will be a very difficult war. Hungary will most likely get pieced out and you most likely won't be able to cross into the Balkans. With some luck, you may be able to get the Mamluks to siege down Constantinople, but you're most likely only going to be able to occupy Anatolia. Anything more than that is just a bonus. Additionally, if the Ottomans are in this same specific war that they're in in my case, versus Venice right here, the Mamluks' navy and the Venice navy may be able to establish naval superiority over the Ottomans, but that's not something you should rely on, that's just something that may happen. And we can actually go ahead and see a naval battle right here that's going on with the Ottomans and pretty much everyone else that they're in two wars against. And there we go, they lost that naval battle. So now, Venice and the Mamluks, even though they're in separate wars versus the Ottomans, they might be able to secure naval superiority in this crossing right here. Be careful when things like this happen. Don't try to engage the Ottoman army, especially if they have tech over you. Right now, actually, they're on par with the Mamluks, so then you might hop in to help. But of course, I'm not gonna abandon the siege. This is just going to be an L for the Mamluk army. And like I said, if you're lucky, you may be able to get naval superiority. And with that, the Mamluks will go ahead and start sieging down Constantinople, which will be of massive help. But don't worry if you can't get that to happen. And at this point, I've also pieced out Akuyunlu for money and war reps. I've let them keep their alliance with the Ottomans, because if I break that, the Ottomans may ally someone stronger, like Tunis, or even in some cursed cases, Muscovy. You may be losing quite a bit of money during this war, don't worry about that. That's all gonna be fixed when we end it. For your tier 2 government reform, I recommend taking strength and noble privileges. At this point, even Genoa has declared on the Ottomans. They're in a pretty weak position. This may not always happen, they may not always collapse like this, most likely in your game, by this point they will have already won their war that they declared in the Balkans. Of course it depends who they're fighting, this is the best scenario you can get Albania and Venice, but sometimes they'll declare on someone weaker like Serbia. And once you completely destroy the Ottomans in your first war against them, it is time to peace out. And here's what we're gonna be taking from them. What I recommend taking is the province of Ankara right here, because it is a fort. Then we're gonna take this province right here, it's a nice one, it produces cloth. Then we're gonna take Coachelli right here, and Constantinople as well. And then you can take back your three cores from the Ottomans and get war reps and a little bit of money as well. And that's your first war with the Ottomans done. Now, depending on if they're losing from someone else too, like from Venice and the Genoa in my case, they may collapse after this, but most likely that won't happen. It's just a little bonus. Now that your first war with the Ottomans is done, it's time to go back home and chill a bit. If you have an opportunity, you may be able to declare on someone else that might get popped out of the Ottomans like Eretna or some of these other guys down here like Girmian, or you may be able to fight Ramazan or Dulkadir. But those are just bonuses, that isn't something that's necessary. So go back home and chill, pay off your loans, and build up your nation. Even though we have such a painful starting ruler, it is time for us to speed up the spawning of the Renaissance a bit too. If your spy network is full, just like mine right here, you can go ahead and build some more claims on the Ottomans. And you might think to yourself, hey, why not release Byzantium from Constantinople if Byzantium doesn't exist, which is not the case in my game, but you won't be able to do that. At this point, once you take Constantinople from the Ottomans, it will already be Turkish and Sunni. Even though we have a lot of forts during this point for a nation of our size, one right here that we start off with, and then these three that we just took, I still don't recommend deleting any of them just yet. We're not that powerful. Once we grow bigger, we will get rid of a lot of the useless ones, yes. So for now, just turn off your forts. And right now, Venice just separate piece the Ottomans, and this is what they took from them. This is not that common, I haven't seen it that much in my trial runs, but of course the game is RNG, and this is just something I'm gonna have to deal with. After you've cored everything up, I do recommend stating all of this and lowering autonomy in all of your newly conquered states. Sure, it'll be more expensive to immediately core all of these provinces later, but it is worth it for now so we can make some extra money. And at this point in the game, I don't really have an opportunity to declare on anyone right here. Ramazan has allied the Mamluks and the Great Horde, which means they're off the table, and Venice's alliances are too good for now, so, most likely, just like me, you're gonna be waiting around for your truce with the Ottomans to expire. In the meantime though, you will be able to pay off a bunch of loans, I've gotten myself down to 5 right now, and there we go, I can actually pay off some more, making decent money, of course with army maintenance down, and with forts off, you will get your economy back up and running in no time. This is mostly thanks to the war apps that we're getting from the Ottomans, which of course will expire pretty soon, 
so don't rely on them too much. Of course, if the Renaissance is naturally spreading through your provinces, you won't have to dev a province up to 30. Constantinople most likely will be above 30 right now. It's at 36 in my game. I haven't dev'd it at all. So you've already ticked off the age objective for a province with 30 dev, and you will just wait for the Renaissance regularly. I do have activated the institution spread edict over here, though. Of course, since we're so low on points, at the start of the campaign, every point counts. Since we're not fighting anyone during this point, there's no point in teching up before you unlock the Renaissance. After you pay off a bunch of loans, you may be able to hire three advisors, which I do recommend doing, especially since we're so low on points. But be careful when the Ottoman war reps run out, you may go into the negative. So pay attention to that. At this point, you may also be able to take new burger loans, which I do recommend doing and building up your nation a bit economically. Of course, the first thing we're gonna wanna get going right here is marketplaces in some of the provinces that may not have it. Like Constantinople, for example. And with that, we're good. Next, I'm gonna build a church in my current capital of Kerman. Later, of course, we are gonna be moving our capital to Constantinople. At this point, something else you can do is build up a galley fleet. So construct as much galleys as you can. If you don't feel like doing that, then you can buff up your light fleet as well. When the Renaissance does spread to you, don't be afraid to take out some loans to embrace it. You will be able to sell it to the Mamluks and maybe even Hungary. For your first idea group as Caraman, I do recommend taking quality ideas. This is because it will help us out a lot with the army and it'll mesh very well with our Caramanid and later rum ideas as well. But that's not the only thing. We also have bonuses to boats over in quality ideas, which we will definitely need because when we defeat the Ottomans, of course, other powers are going to creep in and become more powerful due to that. So after we dealt with them, we're going to be smaller than them, but we're going to have a bigger Mamluks, a bigger Hungary, a bigger Poland, a bigger Venice, and we will need a navy to deal with those guys, especially the Mamluks and Venice as well. So it'll be super, super helpful. So quality ideas for your first idea group. At this point, I do have an opportunity to ally Poland right here. Maybe if I scornfully insult some of their rivals, like the Ottomans, for example, just like this. And there we go. I can ally Poland. This might be something you might be able to do as well, especially if you lose Hungary, if Austria use them. So not a bad idea at all. And the rival to the Ottomans, so they'll definitely help out when we want to fight them. Now that my truce with the Ottomans is up, and now that I have 10 favors with Poland as well, and now that the Ottomans have declared on Venice once again, it is time to strike them again. Pretty much when your truce with them runs out, you will want to declare on them again. And in the second war right here, we're going to focus on taking some provinces we can release Byzantium and Bulgaria from, and then this province right here as well, because we do need it to form rum, and maybe some coastal provinces over in Anatolia as well. So go ahead and declare on the Ottomans for the conquest of whatever. I'm going to declare for their capital right here, actually, and I'm going to call in Hungary and the Mamluks, of course, your standard allies that you should have had in your first war. If you don't have Hungary, it's no big deal. You can still defeat them with just the Mamluks. But since they've allied other nations as well, I am going to call in Poland, who's going to drag in Moldavia and Lithuania as well. And there you go. There's your second war with the Ottomans started. You don't have to wait for them to declare on someone here. You can just declare on them whenever your truce runs out and whenever you're ready. For your first stage ability, you could either take justified wars or adaptive combat terrain. AE doesn't matter too much since we're mostly fighting the Ottomans, so why not go for adaptive combat terrain since our capital is still in Kerman and it'll help us out a bit in these highlands right here. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking expanded royal court. And once you completely defeat the Ottomans, it is time to once again peace out and take the following things from them. Now, in my case, it's a little bit weird here because a lot of their land has been occupied by Venice. The same thing happened in the first war. Ideally, everything would be occupied by you, but it's not going to be an issue. So, in the second war with the Ottomans, we are going to focus on taking one province that we can release Bulgaria from, such as this one right here, and a province we can release Byzantium from as well, such as this one right here, for example. So, go ahead and take two provinces like that, one for Bulgaria, one for Byzantium, and then for the rest of the war score, you're once again going to take war reps right here, and then go ahead and take any provinces in Anatolia that you want, preferably coastal ones, so I'm going to go ahead and take these three right here, and then make sure to take this province as well right here, because we do need it to form rum. And then I'm also going to take these provinces right here and some money. That's about enough for now. Don't worry about aggressive expansion. Like I said, we're only fighting the Ottomans. They're the only ones who are going to be mad. And that's your second war with the Ottomans done. Once this is done, you can go ahead and release Bulgaria and Byzantium. But first, we're going to move our capital to Constantinople, just like that. So we actually don't give that to Byzantium. And because after your second war with the Ottomans, it is time to do that. And then you can go ahead and release Bulgaria from whichever province you took, and you can go ahead and release Byzantium as well from whichever province you took. In my case, these two provinces right here. And then, in our next wars versus the Ottomans, and in my case, Venice too, and in your case, maybe even Hungary and Poland, we're gonna reconquer Bulgaria's and Byzantium's cores. Of course, to form Rum, you need Byzantium to not exist, but by the time we get the Ottomans to not exist, 
you'll also have annexed Byzantium, so it's not gonna be a problem at all. And at this point, you really only need one more province to form Rum, of course, if the Ottomans and Byzantium don't exist. The province of Erzurum right here, which is owned by Akkuyunlu. We'll deal with them later, if they still exist. If not, we'll most likely fight the Mamluks or QQ for it. And like I said earlier, by you crushing the Ottomans, other powers will start to creep in. The potential nations that can do that are Poland, Hungary, Venice, and the Mamluks. In my case, the Mamluks have grown quite a bit in Arabia, but not over here, which is actually good for us. Poland has taken Wallachia, which is pretty common. Either they or Hungary do that. But the power that creeped in the most because we defeated the Ottomans is Venice right here. Which is actually a good thing over here because we can fight them as well with the help of some of our allies right here. And retake Byzantium scores way sooner rather than waiting for the third war versus the Ottomans. This is pretty good right here in my case. You may be this lucky as well or you may have to fight other nations. It doesn't matter too much. It is expected. And by the way, yes, Brittany did get the Burgundian inheritance. Once you hit Admin Tech 7, you will be able to take your second idea group as Caraman. And for your second one, I do recommend taking a money-making idea group, such as economic or trade. Now, since we will be the weakest on admin points since the start from the stating, from the coring and stuff like that, it is slightly better to go with trade. However, if you don't think we control enough trade nodes and stuff like that, then you can definitely go with economic. We are going to be going with both of these. It's just up to you which one you take first. In my case right here, since I'm really low on admin and I have been for the entirety of the campaign, I am going to go with trade ideas. So quality trade or quality economic. Of course, after you release Bulgaria and Byzantium, you can go ahead and give the Umara strong duchies. Once a little bit of time has passed after your second war with the Ottomans, you may be bordering some other nations that you might be able to declare on. Like in my case, Ramazan, which I can't really fight since the Mamluks are about to annex them. But Akuyunlu, the Knights, and Venice are pretty valid targets for me. So after your second war with the Ottomans, if you have an opportunity to declare on someone else, then go ahead and do it. In my case right here, I am going to declare on Venice with the help of the Mamluks for the reconquest of some of Byzantium scores. And there we go, I'm going to declare on Gallipoli. If you don't have an opportunity to declare on anyone, else don't worry you're once again waiting for your truce with the ottomans to run out and retake byzantium and bulgaria scores but there we go at this point the mamluks have left this war but it's okay i can finish off venice by myself and there we go now that my war with venice is wrapped up and i can pretty much get as much war score as i can what i'm gonna do right here is give back as many cores to byzantium as i can which are pretty much gonna be these provinces right here and i know you can do it from this screen as well but this costs more war score you can take more like this even though with this you don't get any aggressive expansion so what I'm going to do is give these provinces back to Byzantium, pretty much all of the cores that Venice has on them, and then I'm going to take some other provinces for myself, as much as I can, based on the war score that I have versus them. And there we go, it's going to be just these two, and let's see if I can take war apps, I can, and a little bit of money, and that's my war with Venice wrapped up. Of course, in my later wars against them, I will take these provinces too, but this is enough for now. And if you had an opportunity to do something like this, then that's great. If not, you'll just be retaking this from the Ottomans or whoever else owns it. Now it's time to go back and chill. Maybe if you can, fight some other nations, but if not, you're waiting for your truce with the Ottomans to expire. Once your second truce with the Ottomans is up, it is time to hit them again, like I said, to reconquer Byzantium and Bulgaria scores, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now, this time just with Poland and Lithuania south, because the Mamluks are busy with something else, and Hungary apparently is also busy with something else. But, even with just one ally, you can take them down, and you could also take them down by yourself, as long as they're not allied to someone like Tunis or something like that. So I'm just going to declare a reconquest for this province right here. And now that this third war is done, this was the quickest and the easiest one so far. Like I said earlier, you're going to give your subjects the scores back. So I'm simply going to give everything back to Bulgaria over here and this one province that Byzantium has left in them. And I'm also going to take this gold mine right here, which the Ottomans happen to have for myself. And then I'm going to take these two more provinces. Once again, we don't care about AE and you don't need to take money and warps in this third war against them. And that's your third war with the Ottomans done. You've taken back as much of Bulgaria and Byzantium cores as you could have from them as long as they own stuff here of course and then a little bit something extra for yourself and for your tier 4 government reform you should maintain the balance of power once you've given one of your subjects all of their cores back preferably byzantium first you can go ahead and give the omera the Umera integration policy and you can go ahead and start annexing one of your subjects that has all of their cores back like i said preferably byzantium first after your third war with the ottomans is done you definitely border other nations and this is where you gotta make your next plans of expansion in my case right here i border venice and serbia so i could go ahead and fight them in the balkans and over in anatolia i could go ahead and hit akuyunlu even though they're guaranteed by qq maybe with the mamluks as well so, after this point, you are looking pretty big yourself. Maybe not as big as I am because I did have the opportunity to fight Venice separately for Byzantium scores, but you should have at least all of Byzantium right here and maybe one or two Bulgarian cores. But either way, you border other nations and this might be the time 
where you need to think about breaking an alliance with some of your allies. In my game right here, I would most likely keep the alliance with Poland and Hungary to help me beat up the Mamluks because we are interested in expanding over here more than we're interested in expanding over here where Hungary is. Sure, you should focus on the Balkans, but Carpathia isn't that important. So we want to go for the Balkans, Anatolia, the Mashriq, Egypt, maybe Persia. So maybe I would use the Mamluks as help to help me beat up AQ and QQ. And after that, use Hungary and Poland and maybe the Timurids or something like that to help me beat up the Mamluks. And I know some of you are wondering why I'm not using the Muslim piety interaction. And of course, you know that with this, we lose to corruption. So what one would do is debase currency for some money, gain corruption, and then simply get rid of it using this button. But that's completely irrelevant right here. We'd rather have this at max to gain plus 20% tax and plus 20% national manpower and a 10% tech discount rather than get some money. So in the early game when you're poor, sure, it is a good idea to use this to get some money. But I think all of these bonuses are way better than just 127 ducats. So you do want to have it maxed out towards legalism. And by around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Karaman and attempted to ally the three important nations that we needed at the start, the Mamluks, the Great Horde, and Hungary. And after that, we waited for the Ottomans to declare on someone in the Balkans and then pounced on them ourselves, taking some important provinces here, including Constantinople, along with some cores. After that, at peacetime, you should have recovered your nation and maybe fought a smaller nation here and there if you bordered them. And if not, you should have waited for a truce with the Ottomans to expire, and in your second war you should have taken a province or two to release Bulgaria and Byzantium from, and some more provinces in Anatolia, and then at that point you could have also fought another nation if you bordered them, and if not, in your third war versus the Ottomans you should have retaken as much cores for your subjects Bulgaria and Byzantium as you could have. And by this point you should end up looking a little bit like this, maybe though in your game you've only gotten one of your subject scores back, depending on our war score, of course I did fight Venice to get Byzantium scores back, so that's why my game might differ a little bit from yours. After this point, the Ottomans aren't a problem anymore, but like I said, once you defeat them, other great powers might start creeping in, most notably the Mamluks, sometimes Poland, Lithuania, sometimes Hungary, sometimes Venice, it all depends on your game. You are gonna have to deal with those guys once you consolidate most of Anatolia and the Balkans for yourself. And of course, after this point, you will go on to form the Sultanate of Rum. You should take their ideas and stuff like that. You will gain an awesome government reform. But of course, that can only happen once you have all the relevant provinces. I only need Erzurum right here from Akkunlu, and of course, the Ottomans and Byzantium can't exist for you to do that, so you will need to full annex the Ottomans and integrate your subject Byzantium. After this point, you'll continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in. Make sure to take care of the Balkans right here. Like I said, you don't really need to push into the Carpathia region, so this is as far as you want to go. Maybe you want to push into Italy and stuff like that, but your main expansion should come over in this region right here. So that's why I recommend after you take care of the Ottomans and after you use the Mamluks to beat up some other big guys right here, then you should break your alliance with the Mamluks and use your European allies and maybe someone else over here, like Ethiopia, Tunis, Morocco, the Timurids, Persia, some Indian nations to help you beat up the Mamluks and push into them because they will be stronger and you will be a bit weaker. By this point, the economy shouldn't be a problem anymore. I'm making about eight ducats a month, which isn't that much, but we are quite small ourselves. A lot of it is from the gold mine that I took over right here. You may or may not have it by this point. The army size is looking pretty good. We got a massive manpower and a force limit from this size alone. And I have a 24 for four stack right here drilling and it is able to sustain itself. Got a bunch of workshops built in my own and my subjects province got a couple of churches here and there a couple of marketplaces and all the relevant provinces and i have upgraded the only center of trade i own constantinople and of course after your second war with the ottomans you should have moved your capital over to constantinople in order to not give it to byzantium when we release them for our first idea groups we took quality and trade or quality and economic for your third idea group i do recommend another mill one maybe offensive maybe quantity one of those two for sure i do recommend offensive slightly more and after that you should take the other money making idea group that you didn't take for your first one so quality trade offensive economic would be pretty good if you want those nice money making policies you could go with quantity for that goods produced as well this is what we took for our first four government reforms for tier five you should take meritocratic recruitment for tier six you should take royal decree for tier seven you should embrace the economic theory for tier eight you should take this one or leviathan for tier nine and tier ten all of them are great and you won't make a mistake choosing either one of these and you'll simply choose based on what you need at the moment but all of them are good you won't make a mistake with any of them and like i said around the 1500 Hundreds, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash redhawklive. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see
see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.